Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and a build finale of Revell's 1957 Cadillac Eldorado Brom. What a fun build. And before we even start, I have to thank Ellis for giving me the opportunity to do this. This is definitely one kit I would have never even thought about trying. But he sent it out to me and said, see if you can do anything with it. And gee whiz. <laughs> um, jumped in with both feet now this is basically a straight out of the box build i didn't add anything but bare metal foil and paint and a lot of glue and a lot of putty so let me put the camera up in its mount and we'll go over the build well as you can see the crew had a blast doing this and they really hate giving it up but it is time we had a pizza party here a little bit ago and then they jumped in and and did their final touch-ups as Mr. and Mrs. Eldorado came over to take back possession. So let me get the crew out of the way and uh, we'll start going over this. Even had pizza. Good pizza too. Nothing better than Grandpa Mark's pizza. Well other than body work this thing was kind of easier than I thought it was going to be to put together. Once I decided to not follow the directions, um, let me bring these over and show you real quick. What they showed was to build your interior and put it in place and then put your top on top of it and all the chrome and everything after that. And man, I was just like as nervous as a cat in a rocker factory. To be honest with you trying to figure out how to get this thing in until I realized that skip the directions put your two halves together and then the interior will fit in through the hole there and once once I figured that out this kit turned easy uh, other than the body work which is just a lot of body work uh, I did the best I could I did miss some things but heh, what are you gonna do um, Stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to do a picture music montage showing the body work and all the, all the way up through the build and a bunch of cool shots at the end there too. But I was also given the idea of leaving the roof unattached so that you can see inside and look at the really awesome interior. This kit was first molded in 1957. And from what I've heard, they have not done anything to the mold whatsoever because all the fish eyes and sink marks and all that that were in the mold back in the 50s are still in it today. But hey, if you're not afraid of doing some body work, you can come up with a pretty dang interesting car. Um, the interior in this thing is pretty cool. I mean, there's not the, the detail that the Skyliner had for back in the 50s, but it's pretty darn close. They just uh, left out some of it from the, uh, the dashboard. But even the dashboard, I mean, if you look right down in there, looks pretty cool. And again, I'll have some pictures of that um, in the music video at the end. So there's that. And... The roof just drops right on nicely. And to be honest with you, I had to do some fidget work on the body, right and left, and bending it and heating it up and things like that with just hot water to get the two halves to just fall together. But they did. And then once I got that, then I was able to, to glue it up and then start the, the uh, paint work. So... It was really simple. It, it really was. I mean, I've had a lot of people going, well, I'd never want to try that. Don't be shy. Give it a try. It's a fun kit to build. And that ship body mount actually went together pretty good. I did, let me flip this onto the side. I did a lot of bare metal foil on this, more than I've done in years. But... I added a strip of bare metal foil down here. There is supposed to be trim there. So I used the bare metal foil to kind of hide any gaps that there were where the body just wouldn't 
fit tight and I mean shoot you'd never know it looks like it's supposed to be there because it is um, I just cut a strip that wide and then laid it in place both sides and I think that uh, that was the way to go with that I glued the one wheel down this thing will roll so easy it's not even funny and I was afraid that I'd set it down and the wind would blow or something and it would roll off the shelf and just self-destruct um, the paint is all um, Tamiya paint I well no that's not true I did use some craft paint on Mr. and Mrs. Eldorado on her I highlined her hair with uh, black craft paint and then wiped it off real good and on him it's the white on his uh, his shirt and cuff. And then on the car itself, I did the two uh, nose cones, the rubber on the nose cones with craft paint. And that is it. The rest of this is all Tamiya's acrylic paints. So I was happy with that. It, it, it was... It was an easy kit to paint, to be honest with you. And I used uh, Gallery's um, GH98D, which is their normal, oh, here's a picture of it, their normal um, style airbrush to do all the, the uh, like the interior work and things like that, that, that I wanted to get close in and not have, you know, a whole bunch of paint go everywhere. And then I used their 68 uh, with a 0.5 millimeter. The other one I used a 0.38 millimeter needle in it. And then the uh, 65, which is the, the pistol trigger, this one here, I used the 0.5 needle in it. I sprayed the, the roof, which was just titanium silver. Or, ti yeah, titanium silver. This is supposed to be stainless steel. And that titanium silver was just the right choice for that because I didn't want to go flat aluminum and just have it just, you know, like a silver. And I didn't want to go chrome because I, I didn't want it to like blend into uh, all the bare metal foil that I had used. So the titanium silver was a good choice there. Um, geez, I thought that was a scratch and a little piece of dust. The body... Again, I used the GHAD 68 uh, pistol trigger on it with a .5. And what I did first is I, it, the, the car was molded in black. So I did all the body work and the Tamiya putty that I used, the white putty, is white, <laughs> obviously. And uh, so I brought it back by using semi-gloss black. So I sprayed the whole thing, no primer, just semi-gloss black over the whole thing and let that dry for two days. And then I came back with a mix, a 50-50 mix of Tamiya's blue and Tamiya's chrome silver. And boy, did that chrome silver sure lighten that blue up because this is, that blue is really dark blue. And uh, I sprayed that. I gave it two light coats and two pretty thick coats on top of that and it laid down smooth as silk I mean I'm not kidding this is the the smoothest paint job I've ever had um, no ripples no fish eyes no uh, orange peel nothing it just dropped it on there nice same with the uh, the black it just laid it down smooth so I was very happy with that. And then the interior, the dark blue in the interior is actually Tamiya's sky blue, which is a very light color, but I painted um, the, the whole interior with this color, um, the titanium silver. Painted the whole thing with that because I wanted to um, brighten it up a little bit, but I didn't want to take away from all the, the dark because I did want a darker, the seats I wanted darker and the carpet I wanted darker. 
So the titanium silver made it to where it had a shine to it, to where when I painted, I could see what I was doing, where if I just tried to paint over that black with the sky blue, the first couple of coats, I wouldn't have seen anything because it would have just absorbed into the black. So I did that, and look at how sweet that color is. I'm going to pick this up and bring it up to you. That color is beautiful, um, and it looks the vinyl. I didn't polish this. I didn't dull it. I didn't shine it or anything. I left it just the way the paint sprayed. Um, it is a little bit shiny, but I figured the vinyl inside there would have been a little bit shiny, so I was happy with that. Now the sides, I did paint the uh, same color as the body and then did a lot of bare metal foil in there too. But the details are very good on those sides. Um, really, the, everything but the dashboard is super detailed. Um, but the dash, you can't even really see it because of that honking big steering wheel. Um, but I wanted the, the different colors between the vinyl and the, the door panels. So I thought, I, I painted them all the sky blue, and then I went back over them with the 50-50 mix that I did on the body. And it is, I don't know if the, uh, the camera will show it, but it is darker than the body a little bit. And uh, it played the part nicely. Now let me rotate this thing over, and I'll show you the underside, because this is just a curbside. So all I did, had to do underneath here is um, paint the aluminum. I used flat aluminum on the pipes, on the tank. I used um, semi-gloss on the drive shaft, aluminum on the, the transmission, and then a mix of orange and red for the engine. And then I came back with Tamiya's panel liner, and I went over the pipes and things like that. And then I thought about um, weathering this a little bit, and I shied away from it. I, I just looked at it a couple of times and thought, no, nah, I don't want to mess that up. I want to show it off as the way the kit was. Um, I was really trying hard to make this kit look like it's straight out of the box build. I added nothing to this thing at all except for paint. And... Uh, half a sheet of bare metal foil so I didn't rust it out I you know I usually rust my pipes and things like that and I didn't do that I didn't rust the tank um, I did let the overspray go underneath to give it that um, look like it was supposed to but it came out pretty good um, when you build this put the axle in with the tires on put your tires on the axles set it on and then put these two pieces on and if you don't, you're going to have a hell of a time getting those back tires on. Um, don't ask me how I know that, but I'm really happy this glue wasn't all the way dried when I put it in. Because uh, it wasn't going to fit. <laughs> the rims came out really good. Um, just Tamiya's panel liner. Oh, jeez, oh, Pete, I'm going to break it. Just Tamiya's panel liner with... Uh, uh, clear orange in the center and then gold pen to highlight the Cadillac emblem a lot of uh, bare metal foil the white walls um, I thinned down some uh, gloss white pretty much and then I floated in there with one of my brushes and when you get the paint thin enough it'll actually like capillary action off the paintbrush into the two grooves in there and flow so when you put it your brush in and you see the paint start to come off start moving the brush away and that paint will flow and follow your brush and you can get maybe a quarter of an inch worth of paint and then redip it and then go a quarter inch away and come back to that paint and what that does is when you get to the end where the two paint your brush and the paint meet it forms together and it merges so you don't have little lines where you're going from it and away and I, th I think that's a better way to do it than I used to do it in the past um, the back end is just straight up um, that's flat white and then 
Tamiya's black panel liner, and then a dot of um, Future Floor Wax, or Quick Shine, I mean, Future's gone. <laughs> I did panel liner on the exhaust, where the exhaust came out, and then clear red on the two brakes, and up here on the little fisheye. I know this car was supposed to have clear red go up here, but there's no distinct cutoffs, and I didn't want it to look like I just tried to add it. You know what I mean? So I, I left that go the way it is there. Um, couldn't This car had no decals, so I just used one that I had for the, the Florida until uh, my printer. I can, I can get in there because I'm going to call this thing. I'm going to put the 1957 Ohio plates that say Ellis 1 on them because Ellis sent me the kit, and I thought that would be just a, a nice thank you for him. I uh, went to print them out last night, and the printer was dead. It just wouldn't print right. So these are just cutouts, modge podged on. And like I said, once I get to a printer that will print color, I'll pop out a couple of them. And if you want to do your own license plates, it's a half an inch across. So lay it out to a half an inch, and they'll fit in there really nice. But there we go. The front end, I took my Molotov pen and did these little lines here. This should be painted black underneath there, but there was no good cut line on it. So I opted to just leave that go. I also opted to not make um, the chrome louvers that go inside here. Uh, I know they're supposed to be there, but there was nothing in the kit. And like I said, I was just trying to keep this straight off the kit. So I didn't even add them. But since those were there, I went ahead and chromed them. The Cadillac V went on nice. That's just uh, clear gloss Mod Podge holding it in. Same with the lights. Let me turn this around here. Same with the lights. Now the lights, what I did is I put gloss clear Mod Podge down first. And I let that dry for a long time because I was just trying to figure out what to do with it. And then I thought, hey, I got gray panel liner. So I dropped a little bit of gray panel liner on there, and as soon as it hit anything extra, I took off with a Q-tip, just dabbed it straight on and out, didn't twist it or anything, just straight in. And then I let that dry overnight, and then I hit that with quick shine, each one of those with a good, healthy coating of quick shine. And they turned into light lenses. So that worked. Uh, it would have been nice to have glass ones, but I just didn't have time to get anything set up for them. Um, I know I was asked to, to measure them out, but by the time they would have got here, it would have been way too late for this build because I, I want to get this done so that I can start into the uh, Texaco station and the wrecker. Um, I did the headlight or the uh, turn signals in orange, and I didn't like it. It wasn't supposed to be that way. So I put two coats of white, uh, flat white in there. Then I hit that with the panel liner, um, black panel liner, dabbed it off. And then after a couple of days, I went with the uh, future floor wax. I keep saying that. I went with a quick shine on there. Um, this is glued on with um, my Instacure. In the back, I figured it was far enough away from the chrome where it wasn't going to gas off of it and mess it up. Uh, it was the only way I could get it to stick. Um, the headlights are Mod Podge. The glass is Mod Podged in. I put a bead all the way around with the um, my gloss Mod Podge. So if any of it came out, you wouldn't see it. It would blend right in, and it did. Um, the two vent windows are, I ran a little bit of the uh, Molotov pen across the top. There wasn't any chrome on the sides of them. It was just a piece of glass. So it had a piece of chrome on the top and down the side. So I hit that with Mod Pod, or uh, Molotov pen to show that off. And then I Mod Podge them in place too. So really the glass is just Mod Podged, and it's holding together very well. And then there's the top. 
I worked pretty hard to get this top to line up the way it does. It's still not 100%, but there's no way in heck I was going to get it any better than that without starting to get a wave going in it. And I, that's the last thing we needed with that. But what an awesome build. Our Mr. and Mrs. Eldorado came out great. I, I had no problems with them. Perfectly molded and really looked good. So there we go. I want to thank you all again, and then we'll jump into the music. So thank you for all the kind words, the comments, the hey, try this or do that. Um, I like it. You know, I read every single comment that's sent. Um, speaking of, we are at 2,975 subscribers as of this morning. Uh, 25 more, and... I'm going to have a two kit giveaway. So once we hit the 3000 mark, I'll jump on, I'll make a video for that, but we're getting close. So if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe up and we'll get going there. And if you're, if you are on Facebook, check out grandpa Mark's hobbies on Facebook there too. So again, thank you everybody. And let's get into the music.